Thank you so much for joining us for another awesome episode of Bioenergetics Beat. I'm Heather Gray, a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and a certified bioenergetic practitioner. And this episode is brought to you today by Nikki, Unleash the Wellness Within. It's a non-invasive, easily affordable, and highly effective approach to optimize wellness. It's a wearable device that puts frequency-based better life in your hands and on your wrist. Make sure to stick around to the very end because we have some amazing announcements that you're not going to want to miss. This is the second part of our Lyme Recovery Month. And on all month on this show, we'll be featuring Lyme guests. We talk about people's journeys with this terrible disease. Uh, we'll show you some inspiring stories, recovery options to help you get your life back from Lyme. Who doesn't want that, right? So also make sure we have a, to stick around at the very, very end because we have an amazing contest. We have an amazing contest every show, but this one is extra special that you're not going to want to miss out on. Uh, you get a chance to win the new Nikki Lime. It's a $1,299 value. So stay tuned. I want to introduce Allie and putting together these special podcasts together and interviewing Dan and Ryan. In the Lime Recovery Month podcast last week, Bachelor at Witter Ryan Sutter and popular actor Dan Payne talked about the shock of diagnosis and paving a road to recovery. This time we check out progress and get some valuable tips to consider and make part of our own journey back from Lyme to a full healthy life. Let's pick up where we left off last week with Allie and Ryan. The message I try to convey to people when I talk to them is that this is not, um, this does not have to be the end of not your life figuratively, but you, you don't have to like give up all of the things that you love. You don't have to quit your job. You don't have to like, you, you can continue to live your life. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel of these diseases of Lyme disease. One, it's getting a lot more attention than it used to get. And people are actually recognizing it as a chronic illness, which helps. And two, there are, there are things like the Nikki plus Lyme out there that can get you back to uh to full functionality like i said i i go to work every single day i work out every day i ride my bike all the time like my life is I, i'm almost <clears throat> i'm i'm uh, you know five years older than i was when i first started feeling sick and i feel much better than i did um obviously at, at that point in my life and so my suggestion is to not um, write anything off, uh, look into it, investigate it, um, try it if it seems safe enough or something that you agree with. Because I never would have thought one that I would do the bee venom therapy. And that I believe did have some, some positive effect. And two, you know, if someone would have just out of the box handed me a watch that said, just wear this watch and you're going to be cured. I probably would have thought it was a snake oil yeah, someone's just trying to get me to spend money on something because because none of this is inexpensive. Like there's mm -hmm. even the, the the naturopathic herbal herb remedies, going to visit a functional medical doctor, it's all expensive. At some point you start feeling like people are just taking advantage of your the fact that you feel sick and that you'll you get to this point of desperation where you really will try anything because a lot of these things that seem so simple, like, like the red light therapy, um, they, they, there's something there and I don't, I'm not smart enough to understand it, you know, how it works or, um, or, you know, the differences in the frequencies and all that sort of stuff. I, I put a sort of put my trust in free medica and Nikki and those, you know, the people that design this stuff, but I can tell you that it's working for me and, that's kind of where I, where I am, where I'm at. That's kind of my philosophy now is I, I don't treat Lyme. People say, people, people, people would say that it's, um, you know, Lyme disease. It's something that you're going to have for the rest of your life. I, I, I consider it an illness, like any other illness, like the flu or a cold. I think you can get rid of it. I, some, some of this has to do, I think with your mindset, if you go into something thinking, this is something I'm going to deal with for the rest of my life. Woe is me. That mm -hmm. doesn't set you up for success. I think if you think, no, this is, you know, this is something that I, I believe I can, I can re-strengthen my body through different um, approaches and I can fight this off and I can get my life back. I think you have a pretty good chance. It, it helps to have a support system 
Um, mm -hmm. you know, like I mentioned, Trista was huge in this. Um, my kids were really supportive. My parents, um, mm -hmm. friends that that I had talked to this uh, talked about this too. Um, I I wasn't super open like talk. I didn't. I don't love talking about it, but mm -hmm. um, the people that sort of knew about it were were always very supportive, and so that helps. Um, people that understand that sometimes you need to just take a nap, like mm -hmm. that that they get it. Um, that always helped. I tried a lot of really fundamentally easy things that have, I think, a tremendous amount of upside. Things like um, meditation and breathing exercises. I tried journaling for a while, and I just could never really get consistent with it. Um, but I, it's it's anything that sort of where you can intentionally encourage yourself. So, like if you're whether that's writing it down, like in a journal, what, here's the things that I appreciate about today. Here's some things that maybe didn't go as well about today. Here's some things I could do better tomorrow. So you're, you're actually looking at it like, Hey, you know what? Maybe I didn't feel great waking up this morning, but I did get out and go for a swim. or I did get to go. Like it was a really beautiful sunset or something like things that things that sort of bring you into introspection and let you, that you realize that, though you may not be feeling great there there are still there are still positive components to your life that you can focus on those and just for whatever reason just getting up and doing deep breathing exercises calmed down my nervous system it just made me feel relaxed and it made me feel like i could take on the day in a um in a less stressed way and i think whether you're battling Lyme disease or you're just battling um raising teenagers the approaching life with less stress is um paramount and when you're going through any of this stuff i honestly feel like a lot of these chronic illnesses and a lot of the things that people are dealing with that can't be quite diagnosed or can't be you can't pin it online or something else have a lot to do with just general life stress and if you can mm -hmm. find ways to reduce that um, that that's going to help just tell your body that you you still have plans for it like this is mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not doing anything I'm not we're not giving up here like this is um, you know like even when I've had orthopedic issues in the past um, the surgeons have always said you need to get up and get moving as soon as possible so your body knows you intend to continue to use it and I think that same thing goes with something like this is you got to keep your, your mind positive. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving in the direction of my life is going to move forward and it is not going to, I'm not taking steps in the wrong direction. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to think positively. I'm going to work towards healing. Um, and something happens, some sort of connection happens. And then you start to integrate, integrate things like um, the, the, the lime, the Nikki plus lime or you, or whatever it is it all starts to sort of work for you and, but it has to start. You have to, you have to start with um, a fundamental belief that you can find a way to get better. So I've learned to recognize the, the importance of recovery. And um, so when I do feel strong, which is I almost every time I go work out now, I feel good. Like I feel like I'm actually progressing as far as, building strength or at least maintaining strength. I don't feel like I'm suffering through workouts anymore just to suffer through them. Um, I do couple that now with um, co conscious recovery, making sure I get lots of sleep that I, my lifestyle has changed a lot. Um, I eat well, I don't drink I, things of that nature have all sort of been components that have helped. You know, there, there are certainly things in your life that, that do lend um perspective i think when we had kids that was one it sort of forces you to slow down and um appreciate the world a little more because going going for a walk prior to kids was usually trying to get to the top of a mountain as fast as i could mm -hmm. going for a walk with kids was like maybe going 100 feet down the trail and picking up every stick and looking at every bug and so you're it's a same amount of time, but it's di totally different experience. 
and um so allowing yourself to just be in that moment and enjoy the fact that you're with your kids and you're and they're having fun picking up sticks and looking at bugs and allowing yourself to sort of soak that up and and enjoy it is is similar to what i feel now with just about everything that i do um even going to work you know and i i love i've always loved my job but now the ability to go there and feel good and and perform well is just so it, it it was always just i always just felt like maybe it was just a given like you just sort of mm -hmm. felt like i oh, just go to work and mm -hmm. something happens and we just we just do what we need to do and get through it and whatever having that stripped away for a little bit of time um and then being able to regain it you regain it with that fresh perspective and appreciation and i think that encompasses every component of my life like from going for a morning walk with the dog to um you know watching max's hockey games there were, there were times where i wouldn't go watch a hockey game or go watch blake's league dance just because i just didn't feel good or i felt like i would be up too late and i needed to sleep because it if I didn't get 10 hours of sleep, I wouldn't be able to get through my work day or whatever it was. I was comp I was compromising a lot of components in my life just to survive um, the components that were necessary. You know, like I was giving up a lot of social and family time just so I could go to work because I, you know, I have to go to work in order to, you know, bring home a paycheck and just to sustain a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, I had to really prioritize things. And then um, as I as I started to get, started to feel better, then not only was it easier at work, it wasn't, it didn't deplete me, it didn't lead me to the degree that it used to, but I could build back in um, social and family time and really enjoy it because it's like everything when you don't have it, like you, just like you said, when, when it's taken away, um, Sometimes you don't, you know, you don't know what you had until it's gone type of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get to, when you get it back, if you're lucky enough to get it back, then you do tend to appreciate it more. So that def definitely was the case with me. I completely understand that. And feedback for people that are watching this that maybe need a little bit of support from their village right now, but that feel bad asking for it. I think I was fortunate in, in the sense that I, I didn't really have to ask for it. It, it was just, mm -hmm. I think if you, if you're surrounding yourself, hopefully with the right people that um, care for you in the right ways, that it shouldn't have to be too much of an ask, hopefully mm -hmm. that you can, um, that, that they'll, they'll sort of notice. Um, if that's, if that's not the case, then, um, I, I really do think you have to advocate for yourself and whether that means mm -hmm. asking your wife or husband for a little bit of time or a little bit of help or because it, it you, you know it's really hard for other people to understand what you're going through and so I, I can't honestly say that if Trista came to me feeling the same way that I was feeling I would I would be as sympathetic like I don't I don't know it's 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 hard it's hard to sometimes notice that people are feeling sick because people do you know, I'm sure you did it too you, you sort of push through it you can still sort of function in life you're not it's not like you're going through chemotherapy you're not losing your hair you don't mm -hmm. really look all that much different sometimes you do like there was a point I think where I didn't I, I just felt like I looked sickly-ish or more mm -hmm. sickly but um but not always. And so if you, if you're not willing to kind of advocate for yourself and, and ask for even just a minimal amount of help, and maybe mm -hmm. it's, maybe I, I'm just sort of um, spitballing here because I don't know for sure, but maybe it's seeking, maybe it's not seeking help from your family or your friends, if that's something you're uncomfortable with, but like trying to find the right doctor or the right functional medical person or the right um support group on Facebook or something, people that you don't even know who are going through the sim similar things. I mean, once, once Tristan and I decided to 
post about this experience um, socially or you know publicly, I uh, I cannot tell you the number of people that responded mm -hmm. um, with suggestions on um, support groups to join or paths to go down or which it, it's really interesting to talk to someone. People will call me and ask if they can put me in touch with their friend from high school who's got Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk to someone mm -hmm. who I have never spoken to in my entire life. And we will have a really meaningful conversation just based on the experiences we're going through. So it, it doesn't have to be someone that you've grown up with. It doesn't have to be someone you have an intimate relationship with. It's this shared experience, this shared misery almost yeah. mm -hmm. that you can use as a common ground and establish new relationships with this one intent and that single, that single minded intent of just having someone you can vent to, who you can get suggestions from who can become that sort of support person for you. If you, if you don't feel comfortable enough talking to someone in your sort of more intimate group, but at some point, it's like I tell my son, who's super, super shy at some point, you at some time, some point you have to speak up for yourself. And you have to advocate for yourself and you have to, to, you have to ask because if you don't, like I said, sometimes people can't tell, sometimes they don't know. And sometimes all it takes is like, Hey, can you help me out? And, and the response is, Oh my gosh, I had no idea you were going through this. This is why didn't you tell me sooner kind of situation. So I guess my number one suggestion would be, don't be afraid to ask. And my number two suggestion would be, um if you if you really just don't have anyone close to you that you can talk to go find someone c call me I i'll talk to you like it, go talk to to somebody because it really does help to get get this out and to um verbalize it and communicate with people and understand that you're not alone on an island here like there are thousands if not hundreds of thousands maybe millions of people going through very similar if not the same experience so Go look at the Nikki, go look at the Nikki plus Lyme. Even if you don't have Lyme, go look at it. My wife uses it. I've, mm -hmm. used, I've used it with my kids. Um, the stuff, there's a lot of really amazing technology being developed um, in the world. And there's a lot of attention being, being put on Lyme disease in particular. So there's a lot of reason to be, um, to be hopeful. There's a lot of encouragement out there. Um, I you know, like just this just the story of the Nikki is encouraging to me is that these are these are people that saw a problem, they saw people they loved not feeling what feeling well, and they went out and they they tried to find solutions to it. And there's a lot of that going on right now. So um yeah, that would be my underlying message. And it's not um anything to add to the conversation, it's just to reiterate um that there there is light at the end of the tunnel there is hope that you're you're going to have bad days you're going to be discouraged that's okay but just just try to always um inject a little bit of positivity into your daily routine and if and there really is a lot of of great stuff going on and um it's because of i think companies like free medica and the, and the mickey plus mm -hmm. lime and all the things that people are starting to develop and then conversations like you're initiating and and instilling these these this encouragement into people is is awesome so um thank you thank you so much to ryan for sharing your open and honest lime journey and such an inspiring story of hope now let's go to the second part of my interview with dr dan Payne. we pick up where we left off last week and he describes creating a path to recovery after handling the shock of a Lyme diagnosis. The response and the amazing feedback and support I received by being open and honest about my depression, uh, I've decided that if there's anything that's truth for me, because authenticity is my one of my favorite words in the world. And if I'm, if something is true for me, and I'm going to be authentic about it, I We'll say it out loud. If there's any chance in any way, shape, or form it helps even just one person, then that's the benefit and that's the worth. So I don't know if it will, but that like, why not take that chance? Uh, because I had such a wonderful, strangely, ironically wonderful experience with B 
being honest and open about my depression that why not hope that that same result can happen from being honest and open about the fact that I have Lyme disease and that it's you know it's out there and people have to struggle with it and my life is getting better because I now know what it is and I can do the things I need to do to deal with it if that's somebody else's opportunity then and just saying it out loud helps then this is me saying it out loud well I'm glad you decided to say it out loud um I'm curious. So I heard you mention supplements earlier. I know you were first exposed to frequency and things like frequency devices when you were diagnosed um, the first time by Stuart before you got your second opinion. Are there, is there anything that's really helped you? Are there any like wellness hacks that you have to share? Um, so on and so forth. And <laughs> we're twins. Absolutely. So once Stuart had diagnosed me through frequency and then it was confirmed as a, like I said, I had to do my due diligence by blood panel. I was all in frequency was an incredibly new, but to me, brilliant concept. Mm -hmm. And after more conversations with Sonia and Stuart, I was put towards the Nikki watch and the Nikki watch has Lyme protocols to help those suffering with Lyme to get better uh, towards you know, health and well-being through the frequency-based protocols they have. So this is my Nikki watch. And every day I uh, I put on the, the Lyme protocol. And I truly, I also, I mean, I, and I have to, like, I'm still learning. So I, I, what I learned or what I believe I am to understand is that Lyme will interfere with your body's ability to absorb some of the nutrients and supplements you're putting into it almost like a blocker or a shield from the benefit of those things. So absorption rates might be lower or even unable to absorb. So all the magnesium, all these things I was taking, I might not be getting the, the full benefit of because of Lyme. So this watch, uh, this Nikki watch with the Lyme protocol has been phenomenal for me. I, I was told that the other option was to take three months of, you know, starting, take three months of antibiotics, which did not resonate with me at all because I know that would affect my gut biome and then in essence exposed me to the opportunities of other ailments and illnesses and things to deal with and I didn't want to try and cure one by creating others. This watch made absolute sense. The frequency-based information on a cellular level, level to help my body inspire the healing and well-being it needs uh, made far more sense. It's not intrusive. Uh, it is a simple operation to use and it's science-based. And I have, and again, this is conversations with Janice over the course of, and she'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's around three months. We've been tapping in and out through conversations. And I know because of those conversations, I can identify the growth and the benefits over these intermittent conversations we have, regular, but intermittent conversations we have to see, you know what, I'm, I, I will, like some of them will catch me off guard. I don't nap anymore. And I must be sleeping better. I must have better energy and my body must be absorbing the nutrients and supplements that I'm giving it in a more efficient way because I'm not dad napping. So those little guys can't get away with as much. Um, I'm just kidding. You know, those 20 minutes of being ruffians is, is gone. Uh, no, it's so the the naps are gone. I know the brain fog is is minimized or at least reduced because I'm an actor. And so being present is huge and being able to memorize my lines and being able to be focused and organized because there's a lot of moving parts. I love that sense of being in more control. Like I don't feel like I'm battling such a mental fog to like I can get by. I've You know, that willpower and desire is a pretty powerful, powerful thing if you put your mind to whatever. And I usually, actually, if I don't, I hope it's okay to say this too with Janice early on, I'm like, I don't know if it's the watch or if it's just psychosomatic response. And my brain is finally kicking in because I have awareness. And she's like, well, does it matter kind of thing? Like you're feeling better. And I was like, you're right. So I'm still feeling better. And I know that th there's different frequencies on here. There's a pain, which is also one of my favorites of pain. So if I'm not, like if I hit the gym harder, things are just kind of like old man factor. I hit the pains thing and I 
just later on realize that I don't feel as much pain. It just takes the edge off. It takes, it reduces. It's not like taking an Advil where, you know, it blocks stuff. And then a half hour later, your body isn't telling you the information. I just noticed there's a, like suddenly go, Oh, I don't actually, I'm not feeling as much pain. And it's just awesome. I, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I'm just grateful. And in fact, Sonia is going to come by and give me another uh, Lyme diagnostic to see where I'm at. And if I get green lights from her, I'm going to go get another blood panel and just see where things are at because I'm excited. I, I can't, there's no way I'm not in a better place because I can't feel this much, but I can't be this more, this much more present and have this much more energy without something shifting other than this noodle, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Lyme and tick-borne disease, it is so much based off of just how you feel, how you feel in your day-to-day -day life. And, um, you know, in the previous conversation we were having, we were talking about how it's so hard when you're in the thick of your journey with Lyme disease and with your symptoms, it can be hard to tell, you know, minute to minute, day to day, how things are shifting. And then kind of like you're saying one day, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not in so much pain or I don't have as much brain fog or I'm not dad napping, you know, every day. And it hits you that you really are getting better. And I think that that just makes, you know, you so hopeful. Um, and hopefully that gives our community so much hope. Um, you know, sticking on, I guess, like the, the theme of hope. Um, I know we've talked about mental health and depression and, um, you know, while the Nikki is obviously amazing and I could talk about that for hours, I would love to know, you know, is there anything that like you've implemented in your day-to-day -day life to, to help with that, to help you get through the days, um, anything that people can take, I guess, and apply to their lives at home? Because so many are, are suffering with that. There's, yeah, thanks for asking that. I, um, I mean, other than obviously putting my watch on and making sure I do my Lyme protocol every morning. I, one of the coolest things, and this is just for mental health for me, and it's, I wish I could give credit to the or, original source, but I don't recall. But it's, um, it's, it's this really cool practice of gratitude. But it's not just being grateful for one thing. It's actually being grateful for one thing from each sense, from each of the five senses. And I, I love that because it triggers every part of my being. You smell, sight, touch. If you can find one thing that you're grateful for from one from each of your senses, like I'm grateful for the smell of coffee, like it, it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm grateful because it feels like my day is starting and I can't wait to get after it. I, I'm grateful for the sensation of my wife's hair because it means she's there and I'm with, you know, like just so I'm grateful for these things. And you just pick one for every sense. And it's really cool because it start for me personally depression is a lot based on the narrative that's going on in my head. And if there's a negative narrative and it's driving the bus, then I'm not at the, I'm not controlling where things are going. And that practice of gratitude with the five cents, I take control of that. And I start driving the bus again from the beginning at the beginning of the day. And then I'm more aware when the negative thought processes are coming because I've started in a place of gratitude. I've started in a place of positive um, interaction with the world and the world around me. And it also gives me like, if you talk about mental and physical connection, I think there's an incredible, like they're, they can't have one, obviously one without the other. But if you have a negative mental state, your body's going to suffer. If your body's suffering, your mental state's going to struggle. So if I can start my mental state with some gratitude and create a positive element, I know my body will follow. And I think that, you know, all the things I'm doing with the supplements and whatnot will have a better effect because I'm more open. I have more hope that they will, you know? Absolutely. I agree with you. I um, I also might have shared this in my last chat, but I deal with sometimes pretty crippling anxiety and obsessive thoughts. And um, I really hit about a year ago, like a breaking point with it, where I was like, this is just, you know, unbearable day to day. And I started writing gratitude every single morning. Um, and it has massively changed my life and it, it, not to say my mental health is perfect and I never have anxiety because 
the reality is I am Italian Sicilian and we're neurotic, you know, since birth. Um, but it's, it's so much better than it was. So I'm so happy that you shared that. And I, I hope people that are listening will really adapt that into their own life. Um, can I say one more thing? Allie? Just for yes, me that... you don't have to ask me. This is your stage. I'm well, like, no... <laughs> please say one more thing. <laughs> no, no, no. This is just a conversation and hopefully good things. But I remember with depression and possibly anxiety as well, it just felt overwhelming. And it felt like, where do I even start? But if you separate yourself from the, the like, if I'm not, I can't, I'm not Dan Payne, the depressed guy. I'm Dan Payne who struggles with depression. There's a difference. There's a separation there. I'm not defined by it. It is not my identity. And if I can make sure I have that separation, when I do the gratitudes or if, whether I write it down or speak it, it's a very quick and simple little task. And it's a piece by piece thing. So it's not like you said, it's, you're always going to be Italian Sicilian and, and you have your battles. And depression is always going to be something, you know, that'll always be my dark passenger. But we're going to come to grip. We're going to come to a, an understanding with each other. And it's not going to be an immediate overall shut it i'm done with you because that just it does, life doesn't work that way but if just the little like it takes for me i say them out loud the gratitudes it takes less than a minute maybe two minutes that's two minutes of my day and it's an incremental little tiny thing and everybody has to just do their due diligence be their best advocate and find all those little tiny things that will help build that better state so that you drive the bus whenever the anxiety or the depression kick in I'm driving the bus. I can feel the pull, but I'm conscious and aware of it. And I've got all these tools in my tool belt, like practice of gratitude, breath work. I mean, we could go on and on of the stuff that I use, but gratitude was the coolest one that I thought of when you said, but there's breath work, there's meditation, there's going to the gym, like the simple act of going to the gym and motivating my body to be active is wonderful. And I, I cogniz I'm cognizant of the fact that I say, I'm going to the gym now to help my mental state. And then I not only am I, when I'm at the gym, obviously help me in a physical state, but I've now attached the two. So I'm going to the gym to help my mental state. And so when I'm there, I'm working out, even on a subconscious back burner level, I'm improving my mental state. It's so mental. It, um, it's my piece. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this has been such a great conversation because I feel like there's so many elements of hope, which was our goal for doing this and sitting down with you. And before we start, I guess, to wrap this up, unfortunately, um, I'm curious, are there things that you weren't able to do, um, I guess, when you were diagnosed or when you were, were undiagnosed with Lyme, but had symptoms that now you're able to do and that you just like appreciate so much. First thing that comes to mind is sleep. Um, yes. I think sleep is the foundation. Again, if we want to tie the two, if I don't sleep well, my mental state is going to be a tough, tougher battle that day. So a good sleep is a great start for any of these things. Um, the reduction in, in inflammation, there's I still want to, I'm still sporty. My kids are incredible athletes. My wife is an incredible athlete. We're a sporty family. And I know that I was, there's times where I'm like consciously second guessing or, or deciding whether to get engaged or not, because I'm like, there's a lot of pain involved in some of the things that I do. And do I have to save, do I want to save that for something else? I don't have those thoughts. So the, the able to, the, the ability to be more present in my world with my kids and with my physical being has been an incredible gift but it's sleep and and physical freedom uh that i'm enjoying and then on the work component if i can the i love my job i'm an actor i it is the it's part of my dna i don't know how when why but i'm just grateful and i love the fact because it, it's about being present. I love the fact that I don't have to work as hard to be as present and in not having to work as hard to be present, I get to enjoy it just that much more. So those are the three, I guess, if in the three different worlds uh, that I can say my personal life, my family life and my work life, those are the three things that I've, you know, since finding the Nikki watch and since doing the little pieces that are connected to the due diligence uh, of being my own best advocate have created a lot of hope for me that there's even more of that to come. And I'm looking forward to it. Well, 
That's wonderful. What I'd like to ask you about is how, Dan, um, you've noticed the difference in your children and even how your family has responded to you, in particular your wife. Because sometimes we don't see things in ourselves. However, people see things in us that we don't realize. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, Janice, remember the one thing that, that I told <laughs> you that my wife said to me? The, the, the expression she said, I'm so glad your spark is back. And that, I can only tell you, is because of the journey I'm on. And if you're constantly in a battle, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know because you're just, you're, that's your day to day. And that's what I'm saying. I didn't even know that my day to day was exhausting and stealing what my wife calls my spark. Mm -hmm. And so to have that energy back and that freedom back to have my wife say, it's so great to have your spark back was incredible. The other one of the most, and kids are such um, truth tellers, like they, yeah. They, yeah, like dad, your hair is white. Yeah, okay. Shh. Um, at any rate, the my youngest, twelve, he has. So do I. We have really bad allergies, and this incredible watch, this Nikki watch, has an allergy protocol. And so I gave it to my twelve-year-old, and I said, "Hey, just try this for the day," because his eye sneezing his brains out, and it, eyes were itchy, and and I came. He came home, and <laughs> uh, the older boy was sneezing, my wife sneezing, and I go, "Oh, hey, bud, how are your allergies?" And he's like huh, they're gone. They're fine. Like just, he just, I'm like, oh, cool. So I can't help but connect the two. Like I, I gave him the watch. He wore, he did the allergy protocol and his allergies were reduced for him. They were gone, but sure enough, take them off. And then a couple of days later, we're sneezing again. Um, and then the other one was my son. He's um, an incredible young man, 50 year old boy, phenomenal athlete, but he's an anxious kid. And, uh, he was having some difficulties in his personal life and he asked about the stress and anxiety on the watch. And I'm like, Oh yeah, the, like, it's awesome. If do you want to try it? And so I gave it to him and, and 15 year olds aren't as forthcoming with the like, dude, that's awesome. You know, but uh, I got, took the watch back so I could do my Lyme protocol. And as soon as I was done, he's like, Hey dad, could I do this stress and anxiety thing again? I was like, 100%, buddy. So for me, that, again, I don't care if we talked about this, Jenna, psychosomatic or whatever. But for an anxious kid to feel better having worn the watch and, and asked for it, he asked for it. Kid doesn't ask for anything except for money. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that was incredible for me. That's another beautiful thing for me is there's something there. And it's... I guess we're going, it's hope. It's hope that the kid will have a better, uh, the 15 year old have a better uh, chance to deal with his things because reducing some of his stress and anxiety. You know, the, it, yeah. Anyway, there's some pretty great moments. It's so neat listening to hear how it like individually and so uniquely has helped almost your whole family. Cause it just listening to it, it's like the realization that I really think in a few years, frequency therapy is going to be like one of the new standards of care. Um, we're just at the forefront of it, which I think is just such a neat like feeling and thing to think about. So anyway, thank you for sharing your family's journey too. Yeah, my pleasure. La last question for you. It is Lyme Disease Awareness Month. So of course, I have to ask, do you have any kind of final message for the Lyme community that's watching this? Um, I guess, in honor of Lyme Awareness Month. Oof, that's a tough one. I, you know, I always think I want to get it right, but I'll just say something. For those who know they're suffering, um, there's always hope. There's a community out there. There's information and opportunities and options to get better. Find find your friends, your tribe, your group, your teammates, and, you know, get after it because it's there is hope out there. And then the other ones for the, the thing we started early on, if you even think there's a chance, because I had no idea that the things that I was struggling with were Lyme based, if not Lyme interrupted and exacerbated, take a chance and find out because if you, if you get the opportunity to feel better and it's born of this, like I said, the, the fact that I didn't even hold, I had Lyme, get Get the diagnosis because there is help, there's hope, and there's opportunity. Thank you, Dan. That was wonderful. Incredible. 
a reminder that anyone can get Lyme and anyone can work out a plan to get over it. I know that was my story being undiagnosed for over 27 years. And then I became a practitioner and I've definitely put Lyme in remission. And I was just a silly hairstylist before I started this industry. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. There is life after Lyme. And a big thank you to Ryan and Dan for reminding us of that. Someone else who has something to say about taking your life back from Lyme is our free Medica CEO, Stephen Davis. Stephen, where do we go from here? Thanks, Heather. Hi, my name is Stephen Davis, founder and developer of Nikki, a personal frequency delivery system. This wearable is designed to deliver frequencies into the body to speed recovery from Lyme disease. Our Lyme suite of frequencies are the newest version of our Lyme recovery program. Thousands of Lyme sufferers, which include my family, use the Lyme daily to overcome Lyme disease. Today, I'm proud to announce a new suite of Lyme frequency sets that are going to be focused on co-infections. Nikki is loaded with Lyme daily, which deals with the Lyme disease, plus nine additional frequency sets designed to address your worst co-infection symptoms. Those frequency sets include bacteria and virus, detox, emotional balance, gut health, histamine, mold and fungal, Lyme sleep, pain and stress. And we know that those are going to be well received from people with Lyme disease. We are passionate about speeding your recovery from Lyme disease. It's a terrible disease that no one should have to live with. Once you have used your Lyme daily, then choose from the nine frequency sets designed to offer relief from your most persistent symptoms. The key is to stick with it. Don't frequency hop until you've used the Lyme daily. Best practice is use the other frequency sets for a minimum of two hours before switching to another. This is giving the frequency sets time to bring your body into balance. Good balance means good health. Because we love our customers so much, a way to show our appreciation, we want to give away a Nikki on each episode. Like I said, though, today's episode is a little bit more special. We're going to give away the new Nikki line, which is a $1,299 value. Here's the key part. You'll need to include today's contest code, which is DAN24. That's D-A-N-24. So make sure you go to the show notes and follow the directions. Also, everyone else, make sure to go to wearenikki.com forward slash podcast and enter in bio beats for a 10% off discount. The messages earlier from Ryan Dan is that you can beat Lyme disease and you can get your life back. It's going to be a personal journey that will challenge you and to create a new personal regimen based on what you discover that works for you. There are people and products and support that will speed the process along but at the very end of the day, you're in control over it. Enjoy the good days and learn from the bad. Join me at our regular time next Wednesday, where I'll be back in my usual seat with an incredible conversation with Dr. Natalie Greenberg. Well, you're not going to want to miss it. Natalie shares her knowledge uh, working with Lyme patients, and we will continue to celebrate Lyme Recovery Month. Have a healthy day. There's a new word for wellness, Nikki. Nikki, the bioenergetic wearable designed to help you feel better and perform better. Other wearables just track how you're doing. Nikki is about helping you do better. Touch the Nikki screen to choose the frequency you want for what you want to do and how you want to feel. Nikki puts a personal wellness center in your hands and on your wrist. Be better, do better. We are Nikki.com. The views, information, and opinions expressed in this content are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Free Medica. Free Medica Technologies Inc. and its employees are not responsible nor verifies accuracy any of the information contained in the following content. The primary purpose of this content is to educate and inform. This content does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services.